the house of the Lord this morning, didn't it? Yes. We're so thankful for all of our visitors today, and we're thankful for everyone here. If you came to Sunday school, that's great. And uh, we're glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? We need to move right on along this morning, and, and we had some birthdays and some anniversaries on record, and uh, on, uh, on Monday, October the 12th, Nicole Baker, and Donna Henson, and Risa Lowry, and, and Kristen Puckett celebrated birthdays. Uh, on Tuesday, October 13th, Kim Akers celebrated a birthday. Wednesday the 14th, Jonathan Harris celebrated a birthday. Uh, October 15th, uh, Sierra Duncan and Becky Snyder. Friday the 16th, Tiffany Margison and Dustin Miller. And Saturday the 17th, uh, Jennifer Tyndall. And uh, today, uh, Lena Harder. So if you see these, wish them a happy birthday. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. And... Uh, it's nice to celebrate birthdays. And uh, everybody like to celebrate birthdays? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had, uh, on our anniversaries, we had uh, two on record. On, uh, and they're, they're both today, the 18th, and Mark and Ziona Henley, I believe with two years. And... Uh, then Samuel and Nikki Holden with one year. So uh, we're thankful for these. And uh, our birthday singer today is Canton Tucker. So if Brother Canton Tucker would head up here. There you go. All right. Birthday to you, happy 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 birthday. Isn't that great? Yes. Yeah. Let's sing to the anniversaries this morning. Sweeter as the years go by. Sweeter as the years go by. Richer, fuller, deeper. Jesus' love is sweeter. Sweeter as the years go by. prayer uh, as we start our service this morning and I think probably uh, one thing we want to be sure to pray about is the upcoming week of convocation we need the Lord to have his way in the services there's always um, people that come to convocation really needing to hear from God and so we want them to get that opportunity and the best way to do that is pray about it pray that the Lord would cause the atmosphere of the services to be such that um, somebody could hear the voice of God when God wants to talk to them pray that our behavior you know uh, I tell you a lot of times if not careful um, you know, non-essential nonsense going on while the service is going on can distract people's attention and they'll miss getting a chance to hear what God has to say to them. I've, uh, I've um, 
been in services before where the fellow was preaching and had a really good message. But uh, there was people, and I ain't talking about nursery children either. I'm talking about grown people that were doing distracting things while the service was going on. And as a result of that, it really was a hindrance. I remember in one particular service I was in that um, there was a young man who hadn't been to church much, and one of the church girls, she, was, she invited him to come. Of course, she was backslid. She was just there because her parents made her. But she got this boy to come along with her. And I never will forget that he was listening, and the Holy Ghost was dealing with him while that service was going on. And she kept poking him and kept talking and kept interrupting. And one of the saddest things I ever saw was when the altar call was given and he was about to respond, she nudged him and got him to get up and leave with her. I wonder if that boy ever got saved after that. So I'm telling you, it really matters. The atmosphere of the service, to a great degree, is not going to depend on who's singing and who's preaching. It's going to depend on the folks sitting out there in the audience and how closely they are paying attention. Did you know that a preacher preaches better to hungry people than he does to stupid people? <laughs> he does. I mean, it's, it's just like home cooking, you know? If you're hungry you'll get some, and if you're not, you're stupid. <laughs> so, we need to pray that the Spirit of the Lord would have his way in the services, all right? Smartless, for all those children in here whose mama's gonna jump your case about using the word stupid. Smartless, that's an alternative, and you better use it, uh, your mom, Probably don't have an opportunity to whoop me, but she will whoop you. So, anyone over here have a request for prayer? Yeah, Brother Prohoda. Okay. Brother Miles. Sister Rahoda? Okay. Sister Smith? Okay. Sister? Okay. Uh, Brother Tucker? Sister Evans. But in the middle, somebody have a request for prayer. Way back yonder. Okay. Somebody else in the middle. Uh, yeah, I see the hand. I can't tell who it is. Timbo? Okay. Sister Harder? All right, how about over here? Someone have a request for prayer? Anybody? If I'm overlooking you, please forgive me. My eyeballs ain't so good. Sister Taylor tells me I need to get somebody else to take prayer requests, but I ain't doing it right now. Brother, yeah, Brother Meyer. 
Okay. All right, why don't we stand together and like unspoken request, let's sift by with an uplifted hand, Lord knows what we have need of before we ask it. But he wants us to ask. Bible says that men ought always to pray and not to think. So I want us all to pray together over these requests. And I'd like for Brother Billy Meyer, if he would, to conclude our prayer. But let's all pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. And we're thankful, Lord, that we have the ability to come boldly to the throne of grace and expect to find grace to help in the time of need. I just ask you, Lord, that you would minister to the request that was made mention of in this congregation. I know that the urgency of them is greater to the person that made it than it is to the rest of us, but you know and know where the sorrows and troubles of this earth more keenly felt than they are in the heart of God. So I ask you that you'd help them. I pray that you would manifest yourself in this service, that you'd use this service as, a, as one of the stepping stones that will get us closer to the kingdom. And I pray that your will and purpose would be accomplished here today. Now, God, use convocation as a tool in your hands to help your saints. God, in the name of Jesus, have your way in every heart in this place and open up the hearts of those that have closed them. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, have your way. God, I pray for this today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be seated if you'd like. G, Brother David. There is a name I love to hear. I love to say.
a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood. Oh, the sinner's perfect plea. And oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because. blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Yes, oh, the blood of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh, yes, oh, the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus yes oh the blood of Jesus it washes white as snow oh yes oh the blood of Jesus Yes, oh, the blood of Jesus. Yes, oh, the blood of Jesus. Washes white as snow. Oh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, oh, precious is the flow oh, that makes me white as snow no other found I know oh nothing but the blood of Jesus oh what can wash away my sin oh nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh listen oh precious is the flow oh that makes me white as snow no other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus I'll sing that last line 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, let's worship him here this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, the mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Oh, down on my knees, that's where I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk oh, without you holding my hand oh I can't even walk oh without you holding my hand oh the mountains too high oh and the valleys too wide oh down on that's where I learn to stand. Oh, Lord, you can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, I can't even walk oh, without you holding my hand. Oh, the mountains too high. Oh, and the valley's too wide. Oh, down on my knees, that's where I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, let's praise him here this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Man, he's worthy of our praise. We got time to praise him here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And you're singing his praise if you would turn to page 509. Oh, I'm so glad I got Jesus down inside my heart. Are you glad for that this morning? Yeah. Amen. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way. For the hand of God in all my life I see And the reason of my bliss Yes, the reason is this That the Comforter, He abides with me He abides, He abides Oh, hallelujah, He abides with me I'm rejoicing night and day As I walk this narrow way for the Comforter, He abides with me. Once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace within, till I heard how Jesus died upon the tree. Then I fell down at His feet, and there came a peace so sweet. Now the Comforter, He abides with me. Oh, He abides. Oh, yes, He abides. Oh, hallelujah, He abides with me. Oh, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. Oh, the Comforter, He abides with me. He is with me everywhere, and He knows my every care. I'm as happy as a bird and just as free. For the Spirit has control. Jesus satisfies my soul. Now the Comforter, He abides with me. Oh, He abides. Oh, He abides. Oh, yes, hallelujah. He abides with me. Oh, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. 
abides with me. Oh, there's no thirsting for the things of this world. They've taken wings. Long ago I gave them up, and instantly all my night was turned to day. All my burdens were rolled away. Now the Comforter, he abides with me. Oh, he abides. Oh, yes, he abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. Oh, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. For the Comforter, he abides with me. There's no thirsting for the things of this world. They've taken wings. Long ago I gave them up, and instantly, oh, all my night was turned to day, and all my burdens were rolled away. Now the Comforter, he abides with me. Oh, he abides. Yes, he abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. For the Comforter, he abides with me. Oh, he abides. Yes, he abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. Well, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. For the Comforter, he abides with me. Oh, he abides. Yes, he abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. Well, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. For the Comforter, he abides with me. Oh, yes, he abides. Oh, he abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. Oh, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. For the Comforter, he abides with me. Oh, yes, he abides. He abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. Oh, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk this narrow way. For oh, the Comforter, he abides with me. Praise God, praise God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You may be seated if you like. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Let the Lord help us here today. Like Brother Taylor said, we want to say uh, how glad we are to have all of our visitors here. And... Um, uh, may the Lord bless you. A lot of you come for convocation. And um, I don't want to mention a lot of names, uh, but I, I do have a young man from my church here. And uh, I seen him step in here and uh, hug his dad. Where you at, Jesse? Stand up, testify. Love you, buddy. Glad you're here. Amen. Praise God. Why don't we have the ushers come this morning? We'll take up our tithes and all of our kids can go to Children's Church. Praise the Lord. Remind you that the services will be up there at the Kessler tonight, and the choir will be singing, and Brother Zach Rapp is going to be preaching for us tonight. Praise the Lord. And... Um, Remind you, in the back, if you need to drop off people, you can go back there and drop off. And there's a few places for uh, people that just uh, can't use the stairs or uh, can't walk very far. You can park up there. And we'll try to have the ushers out helping with the parking. And then, you know, up against the sidewalks, if we can let the elders of the church uh, park as nearest to the building as possible. And then we all can all find a place outside of that and uh, father we love you today thank you for your help mercy grace thank you for every provision lord that you make for us as a church thank you for individuals that have been faithful in giving we ask you to bless them provide for them guide us lord as we go into convocation here in jesus name we pray and everyone said amen today amen, amen.
up there at the Kessler. Um, chairs are just like they always are at convocation. If you need to spread out your family, you're more than welcome to. You know, to, you don't have to sit right up against each other. Um, I'd encourage you. There's hand sanitizer out everywhere. Uh, use some of it. It'll be good. And uh, we'll just pray the Lord will help us, all right? And, uh, all right. God knows what he's doing, and we're going to try to follow his leading. Let the Lord, I really feel like this year at Convocation is urgent. It's urgent. It's urgent for those that need a calling from God. It's urgent about those that have been called by God. And we need the Lord to work from the very first service. And that's tonight. We need the Lord to come by and speak. And then all, all, all day tomorrow, if everyone in here could pray and just ask the Lord, open your heart and be prepared for what the Lord's doing, that God would help people each service at convocation. Can you commit with me to pray tomorrow all day and then ask? I mean, you don't have to kneel down at your spot all day long. I mean, but I'm, I'm asking you all day to keep it on your mind that God would have his way. Can you do that? God's able. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for God's grace today. I wrote this song a while back with a friend of mine, and I've never sang it, so I may mess it up, but it's been on my heart. And uh, have you ever just sat and pondered? about God's grace, just sat and thought about the extent, the depth, and the width of, of God's grace. I can't earn it. I don't deserve it. It's God's unmerited favor. I'm thankful for His grace today. So you listen to the words. Let me introduce you to grace. 
that heals a life that's torn apart for every problem that you face let me introduce you to grace for every problem you will ever face let me introduce you to grace Unmerited favor, God's grace. Sing this with me. Grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and about that right there. Grace is greater than all our sin. Grace, grace. Sing it today. Oh, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Oh, grace, grace. Bible says that great grace have they that love thy law and nothing shall by any means offend them. I suppose that uh, that's partially due to the fact that they are very confident that the grace is going to help them through whatever it is they got to deal with. It. And um, none of it's going to cause them to stumble if they just rely on his grace. Now, I got, a, I got a scripture I'd like for y'all to turn with me to. It's in Romans chapter 13. <clears throat> got a few verses there I want to read this morning. Um, now, I believe in the importance of preaching. And so I, I make an effort so that uh, every sermon is the central part of the service. Now, I know that other people that have other responsibilities probably think different. But I'm a preacher. And uh, so I believe that the most important thing that happens here is the preaching. Everybody else can think what you want to. You know, if you don't mind being wrong, I don't mind. <laughs> but uh, every part of the service is important. <clears throat> but I'm really a, in favor of the preaching because the preaching is what brings us to the part where things are done. And that's the altar service, you know. Matter of fact, that's why the devil attacks the preaching because he don't want nobody to do nothing at the end. Get nothing prayed through. That's why so many, and matter of fact, that's why so many modern churches have kind of done away with the altar service. You know, they just have preaching and then, that's, you know, that's the end of it. But that's not a good thing. Uh, they may think it is, but it's not. I believe that after prayer that uh, preaching is the most important part. 
But I'm not against Holy Ghost interruptions. So I'll remind you of that. Um, when there, you know, a lot of people say, boy, we had a good service, there wasn't no preaching. Now, I don't really agree with that necessarily. But if the Lord wants to do it that way, if it seemed good to Him, it seems good to me. But uh, the statement, we had a good service, there wasn't no preaching, that kind of suggests that um, either there's a problem with the quality of the preaching or there's a problem with the heart of the people that have been listening to it. One of the two, and uh, for some reason or another. But either way, it's not a good sign when a Christian thinks that it's a good service only if they don't have no preaching. Okay? I want to make sure everybody... I, I'm a preacher. I teach preaching. I believe in preaching. If I ever got to the point where I didn't believe in the importance of preaching, I would, I would respond to that just like I would if somebody had told me I had a terminal illness and I wasn't going to live very long. Because a preacher won't live long if he don't believe in preaching. For 25 years, I've, I've, I've had young ministerial candidates memorize 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And... Uh, I've always tried to press that on them. And the first part of that chapter, I ain't going to quote it all, but the first part of that chapter says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. In other words, the Holy Ghost goes on to tell the ministerial candidate that what they need to do is recognize that seeing you have this ministry, you got a tremendous responsibility to those that you're called to preach to. Therefore, seeing. Now, you guys, do you all see that? If you don't, you better wake up and smell the coffee, honey, because you need to see it. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. As we receive mercy, we faint not. Renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. We don't walk in craftiness. We don't handle the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So I, I've been stressing uh, lately that, that uh, in this year of our Lord, 2020, that we ought to we ought to have a 2020 vision. What do you think of that? Amen. Huh? And we ought to be able to see in really clear the importance of preaching. That's what that fourth chapter starts with. Therefore, seeing. So October the 17th, yesterday. Don't mean much to y'all, but it marked a very important day in mine and Sister Taylor's life. Mar on October 17th, uh, 44 years ago, we got saved. And uh, it seems funny, but uh, it, it seemed like eons ago. And yet in some ways it, it, it seemed like just yesterday. That's amazing. Y'all young people ain't going to believe that, but it's the truth, man. I'm telling you. I'm constantly reminding myself, just like the song says, we're not home yet, children, so we better keep our eyes on the Savior. We ain't got but a few more days of labor, and then we're going to sit down beside the river. So this text I'm about to read reminds us of the fact that we're not home yet. So you need to stay awake. Romans chapter 13, and I'm going to begin reading with verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is your salvation nearer than when, or our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Huh. You know, I think, I think uh, we got, oftentimes if we're not careful, we miss the whole point of the last days. I'm going to talk to you about uh, it's high time we face the challenges of the last days. But I think sometimes we miss the point of, of the phrase, last days. 
Think about that for a minute. I mean, we, we get so caught up in the thought of tribulation and its horrible events and, and all that stuff, we overlook the meaning of the word last. Oh. See, last means the end. You got that? I mean, that, that the last train or the last... Uh, matter of fact, the last car on the train is a caboose. I mean, the last song in a musical is the finale. So, 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 so you know, you have to be sure you understand last is important. Like... <laughs> I like to ask the old boy what his children's name was. He said, they're eeny, meeny, miny, and Mike. I said, what happened to Mo? He said, we didn't want no Mo. It's the end of it. You know, Master Cato said he thinks that when the Lord descends from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Have you ever read that? He, he said... Now, I don't know what it's going to be, but he had, a, he had an interesting theory about, you know, because it doesn't say what the angel's going to shout. It just says the Lord's going to send from, uh, heaven from the sh- with a shout and the voice of the archangel. You know, it doesn't say what it's going to shout. But he said, I believe it's going to be no more. You know, like it says, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more, no more, no more, no more. But the point is that a lot of people, even church people, they seem to be ignoring that phrase, the end times. You know, I mean, really sadly, a lot of Christians can't reconcile the concept, behold, I come quickly with occupied till I come. You know, I, that, that, that's a challenge that all Christians have got to face in the last days. Be ready always. And... Be about the Father's business. Constantly have to realize that it's time that we face the fact that there are challenges right now. Why? Because these are the last days. Now that's a, that's a challenge that we all have to face. That raises a really serious question though. Are you taking the last day challenges seriously? Hmm? Well, you know, many long years ago, I heard of a, a missionary, a brother Long. He was a missionary to, to, to the Philippines. And um, his sister and her husband were evangelists. And they happened to be preaching a revival at the church that I attended back in those days. And brother Long was home on furlough from the Philippines. And he came to that service. And I never will forget, they had him sing a special that night. And he sang a song that I had previously never heard. It says, As we look around us, all the fields are white, ripened unto harvest, and quickly comes the night. Christians must get busy. There is work to do. There's an urgent task awaiting you. Souls are crying. Men are dying. Won't you lead them to the cross? Go and find them. Try to win them. Win the lost at any cost. Go out and win. Rescue from sin, days almost gone, low sets the sun, souls are crying, men are dying, when the lost at any cost. I never will forget that. I, I, I remember that old missionary that had given his life 
to the work of the Lord. And I, I, I mean, I, I thought that that really, really, really spoke to my heart. And so it raises a question, are you taking them th these last days seriously? I mean, have, that song, When the Lost, have you ever taken the time to memorize the words to that song? Is, is there enough fire in your heart to melt the frost in your feet? That's the question I want to ask you. What are you doing about it? Did you notice what Paul said in the text I read? I mean, knowing the time. Did you notice that? Knowing the time. That now is high time. You'll wake out of sleep. For now is your salvation nearer than when? Than when you believe. Huh? Hear me, there's, a, there's, an, there's absolutely nothing we can do to stop the wheels of time from grinding on and bringing us to the judgment. There's nothing you can do to stop it. All we can do is work while it is day. Because there's a night coming when we won't be able to work anymore. Now listen, we're seeing the fulfillment of the scripture that warns us not to be lulled to complacency by the fact that the Lord has delayed His coming. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, Bible warns us that there'd be people in our day that would say, where's the sign of His coming? All things continue as they have from the beginning. And, and, and we need to realize that, that when, why he is, He's delayed His coming this long. Well, why is that, Brother Taylor? He's not slack concerning his promise, Peter said, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the fact that he has delayed his coming is an indication of his mercy, not his indifference. Amen. Keep that straight in your mind. He's giving you more time to win the lost. That's what happens. What do you think of that? So what are you going to do? You know, I mean, it, I, I realize that there's nothing that can be, be that you can do to, to stop the end time events from unfolding. I realize that, that there are going to be millions of lost people that will go to hell for eternity. I understand that. But I also realize that, that the judgment seat of Christ is going to be an intense courtroom when you stand in it. I realize that there's gonna, there will be saved people there that will give an account of the things that were done in their body. The Bible says whether they were good or bad. You read it. It's in the book. I realize that even Paul was concerned about, about the, the moment that, would, that, that he would give an account whether, whether it would be with joy or with grief. Remember that? That I might give an account with joy and not with grief. Remember that? He was concerned about when he was going to give an account. So it's high time. That we wake up to our spiritual responsibility. Now it's high time that we realize that we're near the end of our opportunity to get a clear vision. You, you need to, y'all listen. We're near the end of our opportunity to get a clear vision of what God wants us to do with our life. And then act on it. You Bible school students, you really, need, you young people, you really need to listen to that. You're, uh, the trumpet's going to close the day. And so what you, want, what you need to do right now is you, and this convocation is a very opportune time for you to spend some time in the altar every night trying to get a clear understanding of what it is God wants you to do with the rest of your life. I mean, what you've done, what, what's past is past. But what are you going to do now? I mean, it's the responsibility of every person in this room to find out God's purpose for their life. The Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die, and then after that, judgment. Right? Now, now so, so what do you think your judgment will consist of? Huh? I mean, let me tell you, 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 you give an account of the things which you did while you were occupying your body here on earth. And, and listen, you can be saved from the torment of hell's fire and yet have absolutely no reward in heaven. Oh, come on, Brother Taylor, that ain't going to Oh, yeah, it is going to happen. The Bible says that there will be saved such as by fire. 
That just means that they won't burn, but they won't have no reward either. You want to be among that group? They didn't do anything to advance the kingdom. They didn't do anything to try to win lost people. And so as a result of that, they made it in by the proverbial skin of their teeth. And that was it. Is that your aspiration? Is that all you want out of eternity? Is just to make it? You know, God is not very, not very pleased with people that have that attitude. He wants us to make an abundant entry into the kingdom. He wants us to do what we can with what we got where we're at right now. It's high time that we realize we're near the end of our opportunity to get that and get a clear vision of it. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're one of those people who have little or no spiritual ambition. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just trying to wake you up. If you don't have any spiritual ambition about things, you, 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 think, you think, well, it'll be fine, you know. I, I mean, it'll, it'll all be fine. I just, as long as I can make it to heaven, that's all going to be fine. I've heard that stuff. I've heard people get up and testify that stuff. I just want to make it to heaven and all that kind of... Well, I didn't know you ought to want to do. I mean, I warn Christians that have no desire to make an abundant entry into the kingdom. You know, if you don't want to make an abundant entry, you might not make it at all. We're not an eternal securist around here. We don't believe that you're just going to make it by virtue of the fact of the church that you attended. I mean, God's kingdom is not a communist country where everybody gets the same no matter how much effort they put into things. Huh? Come on, that's one of the reasons why communism is so devilish. Try to make people think that. The Bible says to whom much is given is much required. He that is faithful over Little will be faithful also over much. Amen. Because you were faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many things. Come on now. It's, it's, it's all related to how in depth our desire is to amount to something in the kingdom. You need to be letting God stir you about that. You, you, come, you come to convocation, you're wondering about, what, well, what should I try to get out of convocation? I'll tell you what you need to try to get. You need to get a clear vision of what God wants to do with your life in these last days. You're not here by chance. You didn't just happen to be born in this, in this terminal generation. God, somehow or another, for some reason far beyond my comprehension, decided to save you and be, make you be alive now. And re- the reason he did that is he must have had confidence in the fact that you were capable of excelling your, your average and doing something seriously significant. Amen. So wake up. It's high time. It's not going to get any better. Not going to get any easier. Not going to get any more urgent than what it is right now. It's high time. Time we realize that we're near the end of our opportunity to offer up sincere sacrificial worship. Y'all listening? Yes. Amen. Come on, come to church. I tell you what, the fact now, um, we don't want we we don't want to get in that kind of mess. John chapter twelve, verse three. It says, "And then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, anointed his, the feet of Jesus, wiped uh, his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment." And and then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was was this? Not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor. Now this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag and he bare what was put therein. Then Jesus, then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor you have with you always, but me you have not always. I mean, it's high time you realize that we're near the end of our opportunity to really be able to do something sacrificial for Jesus. Something that cost us. You know, God forbid, like, like, like I said, God forbid that I should offer to the Lord, David said, that that which cost me nothing. But I, you don't hear that nowadays. Everybody wanting to offer something that don't cost them nothing. They like to offer something that cost somebody else something. Why, 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 why are you here this morning? Huh? 
You know, you'd be surprised in church gatherings all over this country. You do ask that question, and, and if people were to be painfully honest, I'll tell you what they'd say. They're here to critique the crowd. You know, I'm going to look around and scrutinize everybody and, and have some derogatory comment about what I don't like about the way they look. Or they, they, would, they, they would say, well, I'm here to be in fellowship with my friends. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with fellowship, but if that's the only reason you come, you, that was a very poor reason to come to church. Well, then some of them say, well, it's because, because the reason I come to church, Brother Taylor, is because you're constantly putting a pressure on me and I don't want to hear the chin music if I don't show up. That's bad. That's bad. I'm serious. Are, are you here to worship the Lord because you love Him? Because that's the reason that you ought to be here. You ought to be here to worship Him because you love Him and let Him talk to you because He's got something He wants you to do. This, this, this text reminds us that, that true worship is really expensive. No, I'm, I'm telling you, it requires that, that you give God your best. She took that, 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 that box of ointment, very precious. Yeah, that means it was, uh, give to, uh, and, <laughs> you give your best effort, you give it your best attention, you give it your best affection. That's the way it ought to be when you come to church. Come on, now I'm talking to you. I'm just, I'm just having, we're just having a real nice little pastoral uh, counseling session here today. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's a sad state of affairs in a big portion of the church world when they go around with the buyer mentality that they're going to go to church to see, to see what's in it for them. It's all about what's in it for me, what's in it for me, what's in it for me. They have no concept of how much effort that a pastor might put into preparing sermons, how much effort Sunday school teachers go through. They don't have any concern about how much effort it is for some mama to ba bathe and wash and get ready a bunch of kids and drag them out to the house of God. They don't have no concept. Just what's in it for me? Now, now that reminds me that, 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 that true worship is really, really important because, you know, um, we don't know when our last opportunity is going to be. You remember what Jesus said when she poured the ointment on him and all that stuff? Said, she's done this to my burying. Yeah. Somehow or another, Mary had this, this idea. I don't know that she knew for sure, but somehow or another, she had this idea that this might be the last chance for me to be able to really pour out my worship on him, and so I'm going to do it. When's your last chance coming? You don't know. Mary did more than, than pull out the stops, as we say. She, did even, uh, she, she, she didn't even mess with the stopper on the bottle. She just broke the thing and poured it out. She's determined that she was not going to hold back anything in worship. Like the old song said, I'll give you all. If all is what you ask of me, then I will not withhold. Can you sing that? Do you come to church with that kind of attitude? So what if, what if people like, like, like Judas think it's a waste to pour out extravagant worship on the Lord? What do you think of that? What if there's three or four Judas-minded people sitting around this congregation and they don't like the song service and they don't like the worship and they don't like altar service at all? They're, they're in a big hurry to go someplace and eat. I mean, what, do you think, what do you think about that? Are you going to let them hinder you? I mean, the important thing is that you realize that your chance to worship is fleeting. Yes. Oh, yeah, and, and it's high time. It's high time that we let Jesus know that we love him while we still can. I like that old song. They don't sing it much anymore, but said, I'm going to praise him while I got a chance. It's high time we realize that we're near the end of our opportunity to intercede for others. Huh? Prayer meetings are so sparsely attended anymore, it's almost an embarrassment. I mean, 2 Timothy 1.3 says, I thank God, whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I, rem I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Night and day. 
1 Thessalonians 1, 2, we give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers. Philemon uh, verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. So the admonition, pray without ceasing, that means we should always be interceding for other people. Are you? You say, Brother Taylor, are you trying to make me uncomfortable? Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, sermons are not designed to make you comfortable. They're designed to make you act. I want you, to, I want you to do something about what I'm talking about. Are you really trying to pray for people? Do you intercede for people? Or do you just kind of let it happen? Whatever will. I'll tell you what, I'm glad that there was, that there was people praying for me. I, you, know, you know, the rich man in hell, he suddenly got a burden for his five lost brothers. Yeah, read that sometime. I mean, he's down there in the flames, and all of a sudden, he's got a burden. He wants, he wants, uh, he wants Abraham to send Lazarus to dip his finger in water, you know, and then, but, they don't want, but that won't work out. And he said, he can't do that. He said, well, send him to my father's house. I got five brothers. Send him there to warn them lest they come to this place of torment. Are you... Are you interceding for your loved ones now while you got a chance? Or are you going to expect that somehow at the end of this that you're going to get Father Abraham to send somebody to do what you were supposed to do? It's high time you wake out of sleep. Now, years ago, I spent a rainy afternoon. Couldn't work, you know. So I went to the public library, try to improve my knowledge of things. And I was just, you know, looking right at the religious section in public libraries leave a lot to be desired. You know, uh, if they have a commentary, it's usually one of those really uh, nutty jobs, you know, that some liberal people wrote that's, you know, don't believe in miracles and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on that. But um, I had this idea that about uh, a message I was working on about time. And so I went to the card catalog and drug everything out there and I looked up time. And I went down there and I found a book. The title of it was Time. That was just the title of it. It, was a, it wasn't a very th thick volume. It was a little thin volume. And, 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 and it, was really, you know, it was really more designed for uh, grade school children than it would have been old dudes. But it had some powerful stuff in it. I mean, each, and let, me, let me just, you know, and so what I read and I found out that the definition of time, you know what the definition of time is? Duration. And you know what duration means? When things are done. That's what time is. When it says it's time and high time that you wake out of sleep, it's time that you wake up while things can be done. No, and, I, and so I was, I, I was reading that, and the book, I, I, this, I'm not trying to bore you, but I thought this was interesting. The book told such things as, as how many bottles of Coke are filled at the Coca-Cola plant every minute. I don't remember what it was, but I remember that was interesting. It told how many, how many times a hummingbird flaps its wings in a second. I mean, it's like 60 times. Ain't no wonder when you watch that hummingbird, it just looks like he's buzzing. <laughs> it, it, even, uh, it even tells you how far a car will travel at 60 miles an hour. How far it'll go in a second. How many feet. And, and, but, but, but hear me, time stops for you on earth and you won't be doing no more activities. It's time and high time. Your, your, your opportunity to pray for those you love is now. It's time and high time you do your praying. It's time and high time you do your witnessing. It's time and high time that you work on your sermon preparation. It's time and high time you put effort into your 
service for the king because your time is running out. Now, I know. It's easy for y'all to sit out there and think, oh, yeah, Brother Taylor, another one of them rattle our cage because of the urgency of the hour. and We've had it done before. Yeah. And you know, one day it's going to be done for the last time. I got it wrote down somewhere, the, the amount of people that I know of, and it's quite a few, that the last sermon they ever heard, I preached it. I wrote that down, not for their sake, because there's nothing it'll do for them. I wrote that down to remind me who I'm talking to. I am talking to people with eternal souls and a temporary life down here. Brother David, if you'll come, I'm going to close on this. I got clothes right here at the top of my paper. It's high time we realize that we are simply running out of time. One of these years, it's going to be the last convocation we ever have. Yes. Every year it tells in the standard bearer the how manyth one it is. One of these years, it'll be the last one. 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. Paul knew that time had run out. His ministry was done. He'd been serving the Lord. It had been a long time back that he got smoked down on the road to Damascus. But time ran out. Are y'all listening to me? The time eventually expired. Have you ever... Have you ever... I remember I, I went over to the hospital to see... An old guy that was a, he'd been a police officer in Washington, D.C., and I'd been over there to see him the day before. His hearing aid batteries had gone dead, and I was trying to talk to him about his soul, and he said, you come back tomorrow, and I'll have some new batteries for my hearing aid, and, and, and you can, you can uh, tell me that, what you want to tell me about out of the Bible there, Reverend, but I can't hear you now. And so the next day when I got done, uh, I was teaching in, in a Christian school. When I got done, I jumped in my car. I drove over there to the hospital. I walked in and went over to the lady at the desk because I couldn't remember what room he was in, and I asked her what room uh, Mr. Clegg was in, and I never will forget, she looked up at me and looked down at the list and looked up at me and looked down at the list and said, who are you? I never had him ask me that before. I said, I'm his preacher. And she looked down at the list and looked up and said, and this is exactly what she said. She said, Mr. Clegg expired. He died. But I'll never forget the words she used. Expired. Expired, if you look it up, just means time ran out. Come on now, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about uh, like, a, like, like an expiration on a, on, a, on, a, on a pack of crackers. I mean, it just it run out. It's too late. Done. Time and high time you awake out of sleep. For now is your salvation nearer than when you believed. Do what you got an opportunity to do now. The time of my departure is at hand. Any moment he expected to hear the footsteps. Paul did. That's what he was, he was writing this when he was in prison. Any moment he expected to hear the footsteps coming down the hallway. It was going to be the guard that was going to take him out to the executioner. And they was going to behead him. The time of my departure is at hand. I mean, you know, listen, he was going to go to the chopping block. It was going to be over. 
Every time, I, every time I preach a funeral and I walk around through the cemetery and I see all of those gravestones out there, I remember a, a, a poem by Robert W. Service and it goes like this. Just think some night the stars will gleam upon a cold gray stone. Trace a name with silver beam and lo, it'll be your own. Your life is speeding on to greet with epitaphic rhyme. Your life is just a little beat within the heart of time. A little pain, a little fame, a laugh lest you should moan. A little fame and a little blame. And then it's just a star gleam on a stone. Wake up. Wake up. I know you're sitting out there, you young people, if you're not careful, you'll sit out there and say, well, Brother Taylor, you're an old dude. You need to be expecting that it's not going to be long for you. It's not going to be long for you either. It's high time. You wake up. Son, of all the generations that God could have brought you up in, He brought you up in this generation. You need to do something for God now. These are the last days. You? You hear me? Ladies? Y'all listening? I, I don't understand. I don't, know everything I, I don't know everything God's trying to do in your life or what He's trying to do with you. All I know is here you are. We are in the last days. You need to take spiritual things serious. You need to get God to give you a good, clear inclination of what you need to do next and where you need to go from here. Don't waste your time. Flipping around with a bunch of non-essential nonsense. It isn't going to mean anything 30 seconds after you die. You need to be thinking about what God wants you to do with what life you've got. Just think. Come on, I'm talking to you. Just think. Some night the stars will gleam upon a cold gray stone. Going to trace a name with silver beam and lo, it'll be your Just go out there. No, I'm serious. Go out there. Every time I walk through the cemetery and I pass through all of those, all of those Mount Airy granite stones, gray stones, I think one of these days, it's Jesus Terry's. My name's going to be on there. And so is yours. Oh, that's morbid, Brother Taylor. No, it's reality. Your life is too, wet, too precious to waste it on yourself. You only got the one. One opportunity, son. That's all you're going to get. One chance to excel in spiritual things. One chance to win as many souls as you possibly can. One chance to continually work on the potential that you could preach the real sermon that would make a difference in somebody's life. Don't waste your time. Ladies, there are certain people that only you're going to be able to reach. There are children and young people especially that you're going to come in contact with that somehow, and, you're, and when you grow older and you get married and you have children of your own, there's not going to be anybody that will have a greater influence on the life of your children than you. Lift your hands. I want everybody to lift your hands right here. We're going to pray. God help us. God help us. God help us in this place. God help us. God help us to make use of our time seeing that we are so quickly running out of time. Stand with me all across the building. Now, this is one of those services where there's a lot of people in here that need to respond to this altar call. There's people in here that, that you don't know for sure it's well with your soul. You come to church here sometimes. 
Maybe you ride the bus, or I don't know how you get here. Maybe you're regular, but you've never made your call in an election, sure, and you come. It's time that you made a firm commitment to Jesus Christ. Make a commitment. Ask Him to forgive you. Save your soul. Do a work in your life. It's time you do that because you don't have any promise of another day. There's some of you that are here that God's been talking to you about something He wants you to do for Him. It's time that you wake up and realize if you're going to do it, you got to go ahead and do it now because you don't have that much more time. You know, I really, I really, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling this probably better than the rest of you, but I really feel like there's a sense of urgency in this room. I don't, I don't think that, that I'm preaching on the topic of time because it's just something that's irrelevant, and, but we had to while away the time in here. No. God is trying to wake some of you up that you need to open up your heart and let Him talk to you about what He wants to do with you now. So you're here and you feel it. Now I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You're feeling it. You're feeling it right now while I'm talking to you. I understand. Don't misunderstand me now. I understand the crowd is big. There's some folks in here ain't feeling nothing. But there is. there are those that you're here right now and you're feeling the tongue of the Holy Ghost talking to you about doing something with what time you have. I want you to step out of your seat right now. If that's you, God's talking to you. That's good, son. And I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, you told me to number my days that I'd apply myself to wisdom. In other words, that I'd use, use my head to figure out what I needed to do with the number of days I got. Lord, please help me right now to understand that and know what I ought to be doing. Look for ways to get it done. Jesus said, Here I stand. Won't you please let me in? And you said, I will. Tomorrow, Jesus said, I am He who supplies every need. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow. I thought about today, oh, it's so much easier to say, tomorrow, who promised you tomorrow, you better choose the Lord today, cause your tomorrow very well might be too late oh tomorrow i'll give my life tomorrow i thought about today oh it's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the Lord today cause your tomorrow very well might be too late Jesus said here I stand won't you please take my hand and you said, I will. Tomorrow, 
Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow. I thought about today, oh, but it's so much easier to say tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? Better choose the Lord today, cause your tomorrow very well might be too late oh tomorrow i'll give my life tomorrow i thought about today oh but it's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the lord today because your tomorrow very well might be too late jesus said here i am won't you please let me in and you said i will tomorrow jesus said i am he who supplies every need and you said i know but tomorrow tomorrow who promised you tomorrow i thought about today oh it's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the lord today because your tomorrow very well might be too late oh tomorrow i'll give my life tomorrow i thought about today Oh, it's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the Lord today cause your tomorrow very well might be too late Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please take my hand? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, give my life tomorrow, 
I thought about today. Oh, it's so much easier to say tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? Better choose the Lord today, cause your tomorrow very well might be too late. Oh, tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow. I thought about today. Oh, but it's so much easier to say Tomorrow, who promised you tomorrow? Better choose the Lord today Cause your tomorrow very well might be too late My sacrifice is less than giving you my very best. Help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. I will give you all, I will give you all, if all is what you ask of me, I will not withhold, and if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best. Help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. 